are really, really good. This guy right here is a guy named Harvey Mackey. He wrote a book called Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. And what was he implying there? You need to make sure you have a network before you need a network. If you wait until you need a network and you don't have one, the well is dry. So make sure you, dug, you have that well. It's dug, you've got water in it, and it's ready. When I needed that job, I'd already dug the well, and the door opened for me. So it's a great networking book. It's, it's a little old, but the, 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 the principles in it are timeless. The middle guy there is a guy named Keith uh, Farazi, and he has a book called Never Eat Alone. Again, the title suggests it's about building relationships and connections, networking, very good book. And then the guy on the far right is a guy named Jeffrey Gittimer. He's out of uh, Charlotte, and he's got a book called The Little Black Book of Connections. So if you're looking for the easiest book to read of these three, very thin, big copy, easy to read amazing points and tips on networking in there. So if you're interested in the topic, just wanted to share that with you. All right, this is the audience participation portion of the program. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna show some brands on the screen, and I just want you to sort of tell me what you think about the brand. It could be one word, it could be one sentence, whatever it is. So when you see that particular brand, give me some of the words or phrases that stand out to you. What do you think about when you see that? Popular, yes. Successful. Successful, yes. What else? Monopoly. Seven. Almost like a monopoly. A monopoly, yeah. Good. Those are all good. Keep them coming. Give me a few more. Innovative. Innovative. Yes. What else? Adaptable. Adaptable. So they change when they need to change. Good. Others? It's the most valuable company in the world, right? Yeah. Did you say they network? Did you say it again? Network. Network. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's do another one. I'm sorry, by the way, surprise, no one said Steve Jobs. I know he's, he's been, been gone for a few years, but surprise, I think it's Steve Jobs. What do you think about it? You see that? Convenient. Useful. Useful. Good. What else? Customer driven, that's very important. Yeah, good. What else do you think of when you see that logo? I think about flexible. Questions and answers. They have all the answers. Isn't that amazing? If you need anything at all, Google it. I mean, it's, it's amazing. All right. Now, what do you think about when you see that? You don't have one of those here, by the way? Yeah. What do you think oh, about it? I'm talking about Best Buy. Do you have a, is there a Best Buy? Here? Not in town. I think the closest to either Douglasville or Newton. Okay. So when you see Best Buy, you think about Best Buy, what are you thinking? Look, I'm seeing your facial expression. It's not good. What do you think? I just see that. Unsuccessful. Unsuccessful. Ouch, yeah. His body language is definitely, I don't know what he was thinking, but it's like, it's not good. You see a little bit of a difference there? Now let's, we'll see where I'm going in just a minute. Now I'm going to shift for a minute and we're going to show some individual personalities. So we're just going to move from what the break from the specific company to the individual. Got a reaction over here. Again, I'm not sure what you're thinking. What are you thinking about when you see the Donald? She doesn't want to say it. Fair, fair enough. I won't force you to say it. What, what do you guys think? Come on, give me some words here. Yeah. He reminds me of uh, Biff Tanner from uh, Back to the Future. What was Biff's last name? Tanner. Yeah, so Biff from Back to the Future reminds him of Biff. Yeah, it's been a few years. Yeah. He's a character. He is a character. He's definitely a character. Yeah. Wealthy. He's rich. Powerful. Powerful. Yeah. What else when you see Donald Trump? What else comes to mind? Anything else? Yeah. He has resources, undoubtedly. Good. All right, a couple more. It'd be interesting, you know, if I'd done this exercise, what, seven, eight years ago versus now. But anyway, we're talking about today. What words come to mind when you see Miley Cyrus? Strange. Strange. Publicity. Tacky. Publicity. 
publicity fiend. She wants some attention, doesn't she? Wild. Wild. Yeah. I was hesitant to show some of these pictures. So. <laughs> hey, it's tough on the ones that you can actually show. <laughs> All right. Couldn't, I, guess I couldn't go through this exercise without a Kardashian. <laughs> so when you see Kim, what do you think about? Say that again? Wealthy. Yes. Come on. It's not that hard. The entire family is crazy. Crazy family. Money. Money. Yeah. Yeah. She's always around, right? Entertainment, the entertainment world. She's always around. Anything else before we move on? Those are all good. So here's what I want to talk. Here's what I want to talk about for just a minute. So imagine if the next screenshot after Kim Kardashian had been your picture. And let's just say we had a room full of folks that really knew you well, and they were willing to give you the truth. <clears throat> Don't answer out loud. But what words would they use to, to use to describe you? There's always, generally, some positive, and maybe there's always opportunity for growth as well. Um, a brand, as you think about your brand moving forward in your career, or really a brand is just, there's multiple definitions, but really it's just a set of expectations or promise. So each of you individually, as you develop your career, you're going to be known for who you are. You're going to be known for your character, hopefully, the way that you produce. And as you develop that over time, people, there's going to be a, a set of consistent expectations that when I, when I deal with you, I know exactly what I'm getting. The best brands in the world are built off consistency. Your brand is vitally important, and you're the president and CEO of your brand. Nobody else has that title. You own your brand, you control your brand, and your brand is impacted by the decisions you make every single day. So what do you want to be known for? Think about that set of expectations that you want to build over your career. And you're already working on them now, by the way. You're already developing this stuff now. But I want you to think through that because your brand is so vitally important. So there's six and a half thoughts on personal branding, all right? To discover your existing brand, I'm going to give you a tool. And I've used this tool myself because you're probably like, well, how would I do that? You can certainly ask a couple of friends. They may give you the truth. They may give you the good part of the truth. They may not give you the whole story, though. So if you're interested, you just find the right set of notes here. If you're interested, you can Google this term, uh, 360, which is just the number 360. 360 reach personal brand assessment. So again, you just type into Google 360 reach personal brand assessment. You'll see a website there. It's, it's a free tool. There are paid versions, but there are free versions and free is a lot of use. You get to select certain people, you get to select certain criteria, and, you, and the system sends out the emails for you. So you're not able to see who responds, and you're not able to see individually how they respond. What you are able to see is an aggregate report of how you're viewed. And it's eye-opening at times. It's like, oh, you'll, and not all of it's negative. A lot of positive stuff and also some things, you know what? I maybe had a blind spot in a certain area of my life that I wasn't aware of. I'm glad that I'm aware of it now. That exercise will do that for you. Make sure you have some tough skin if you choose to do it because um, one of the questions that I recall is how can this individual get better? What are some weaknesses? And that's sometimes tough to hear. But I'll tell you, the all-stars in, in life are the ones that can take constructive feedback and not, not get defensive over it, and that's tough to do. But instead, to embrace the criticism, to embrace the feedback, and to push forward. And you always have to consider the source of the feedback as well. The feedback might hurt a little more if it's coming from someone who's really close to you or who knows you really well, but it's also oftentimes the most valuable feedback. So those who love you the most are going to tell you the truth. And they're going to help you get better. So I'd encourage you, if you want to know about your existing brand, Google that, that term I just gave you. Use the free tool. Try it out. See where your brand is at today. 
And once you get that report back, or maybe you just talk to some friends and understand what your brand is about, then you're going to move to number two there. Begin to work toward your ideal brand. Where are the gaps? So my brand assessment is saying I'm this. I want to be this. There's a gap there. How do I improve myself? One of our B6 values at Huddle, we call our values B6. You heard me say be likable early, earlier. Another one is be growing. We have a huge focus inside of our company that we all need to be constantly getting better. I was just with our CEO last week in Nashville at a branding seminar. We're trying to get better. We're encouraged to read consistently, gather new information. I know, I know what you're probably thinking here. You guys are students. You're having to do this right now in many respects. Hopefully you're having a valuable experience while you do it. But I'm just telling you, this sets the foundation for you. But once you get into the, into the workforce on a consistent basis, you're going to want to absorb as much knowledge as you can because that's where the growth truly starts. You're setting your foundation now, which is vital. Always be growing, always be getting better. So work toward your ideal brand. What's, uh, oftentimes I'll call this the POD or the point of difference. What's going to be your point of difference in the marketplace? I get resumes all the time, and most of them look exactly the same. I mean, the words are different, but they're really the same. There's nothing that stands out about most of the resumes I get. What's going to be your point of difference? What skill set are you going to develop? What are you going to devote yourself to? What are you going to study? What can you be? Think about this a few years down the road when someone thinks about X. So this, the, the, this um, the webinar, the seminar I went to last week, a guy named Donald Miller ran it. He's an author. He sold millions of books. He told this story that uh, this probably years ago. He really wants to be known as the guy that helps you structure your story as well. Because when you're in branding, it's all about how you tell a story. And he said he was talking to one of his mentors, and his mentor said, you know, I really think you're becoming known as the guy who can tell a story, who can help others tell their story. He has a point of difference now. He's known as the story guy. We paid good money to go down here and hear him talk about how you build and construct the right story, the right brand story. So what would that look like for you? Think about that. Again, that develops over time, but every day you're building toward it. You're either taking a positive step toward it or you're stepping away from it every single day. It's like a, there's a great book called The Compound Effect. You don't see improvements in your life, or you, a lot of times you don't even see yourself sliding back on a daily basis. Just doesn't work that way. But you get a year down the road, look a year back, you can say, man, I got better. Or you can say, there wasn't a lot of growth there. And others can tell as well. So keep that in mind. Number four, I mentioned this earlier, be consistent. Great performers in the workplace are incredibly consistent, and hopefully consistently great. If, you're, if your coworkers or business partners don't know what they're going to get from you each day, you will not be successful long term. You may be lucky for a while, but the luck will run out. Be incredibly consistent with your brand. We talked about be growing. One tip I'll give you here um, in addition to what I said earlier. So used to I would use the time in my car just to listen to the radio. Maybe it's I got about 20, 25 minutes back and forth more, so you know, 45, 50 minutes total. The more I read that I start reading people saying, listen, that time in the car can be incredibly valuable. So now my radio is almost never on. I'm almost always listening to a podcast that can make me better, an audio book that can make me better, a motivational program that can make me better. That's 45, 50 minutes a day. If you think about that over the course of a year, I'm getting a semester two of college in each year, and I'm getting better. So think about how you invest your time, not how you spend your time. Anyone can spend time watching television. Successful people don't watch a lot of television. It's all right to have some mind-numbing activity every once in a while, you find yourself sitting home watching three or four hours of TV a night, which most Americans do, you will not be successful. Or at the very least, you will not live up to your potential. Not a lot of sports, I do watch the I do watch the groups. It's college football. Be valuable. We had this discussion uh, yesterday in our office, some of our leadership team. We're talking about some of our younger employees, We're talking about their growth patterns how they can grow and develop, and this is what it boils down to. See, one common misconception, people think they get paid by the hour. Even if you're on salary, you, know, you can do the mathematical calculation and figure out what you're getting paid. While you can do that calculation, that's really not true. You're not getting paid for the hour. You're getting paid for the value you bring to the hour. There's a world of difference between those two. 
if you bring more value, think about your personal brand, who you are, and if you bring more value, you will have more opportunity. It's just really that simple. You will make more money. Money's not the end all be all, but you want some money, right? You want to be able to do some things in life, go on vacation, pay the bills, all that stuff. Think about the value you bring. How are you being valuable? It's going to be huge. And authenticity, we talked about that earlier, but I included it again here intentionally just to, just to be real. People, as you try to build your brand, they will spot, they will know if you're a fraud. Haven't you all met people before and you're like, that person is fake. You just know it. You can also, on the other side of that, there's people who are like, man, that person is just so authentic and sincere. Like, they're comfortable in their skin, they know who they are, and they're okay with that. And those people are people I love to hang out with. So make sure you get who you are. We have one more topic we're going to get before we go on. Um, how are we doing on time, Dave? You're good. We're good? Yeah. All right. I want to make sure I get you guys out of my time. Any questions on building your personal brand? Good. I'm doing a good job, Dave. There's not any questions. And I know uh, you talked about the 360 reach, right? And I know I've received emails, um, actually, some from some former students that wanted me to complete that for them. So. I think it's a good exercise. It, I guess it, it you, like you said, it takes a little bit of, um, you got to be fairly confident and, and willing to hear some, maybe some um, things, opportunities to work on. But I, I think it's a good exercise, especially as you're trying to figure out because it, the, you know, it, it's, even though we, we try to reflect and look inward, sometimes it's good to get, uh, uh, you know, the opinions of others and how they view us, right? And so I mentioned earlier, you know, maybe think of one thing that you're going to do as a result of this. Maybe that's some of your one thing to, to do that assessment to see where your brand is at. All right, last big topic here before we uh, before we summarize, and that's just on the topic of communication. So we talked about value. We talked about a lot of topics that are important to your career and to your success. I'll make another bold statement here, and this is the truth. Those who communicate better earn more money as well, have more success, have more opportunity. And you may say, I'm not a great communicator. Maybe I don't write that well. Maybe I don't speak in public that well. That's OK, because communication is a skill. And a skill can be learned, and a skill can be improved. So no matter where you come in here tonight, on your communication level, you can get better. And even if you're pretty good at it, you can get better. I see it time and time again. So I have to do it every day. You guys are having to do it every day. You have to communicate your thoughts in a coherent way. Those who can communicate effectively, verbally, can get to the point and tell the right story, the story that resonates at the right time, they're going to have huge success. I see it every single day. Those that struggle with that, it's going to be more of a challenge. So Brandon knows this. Brandon was in my class. I taught, whatever that was, a few months ago now. Time sort of flies by. Brandon's a good student. Um, students got a little frustrated with me because I graded them on their grammar and on their punctuation, on you know, capitalizing the first word of the sentence, stuff like that. They were not happy with me for the most part. Some students said, this is not an English class. I was teaching a sports marketing class. I said, every class is an English class. You must be able to write. I don't care if you're in sports marketing, you've got to be able to write. I communicate every day in writing. So work on that skill. I talked about the resumes that I send in, or excuse me, that I receive. Cover letters, it's tough guys. I'm getting stuff with typos in it. As soon as I see one, I guess what happens to the resume? It's gone. And they may be great. Listen, we all make errors. Um, I misspell things occasionally. It, it does happen. You just want to be cautious on when you choose to do it. And so be sure with your resumes as you guys are going out in the workforce, have friends look at it, have a professor look at it, make sure you're buttoned up tight on that. Let me tell you another huge point of differentiation. I'm going off script a little bit here, but it's important for you all because I'm, I'm hiring a, a, a graphic design intern now. But think about your cover letter more than you probably typically do. I talked about a point of difference earlier. 
if you will actually customize a cover letter, which takes a heck of a lot more time, a heck of a lot more energy, and it slows you down. So there's lots of